Okay, hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming here. And it's really a pleasure for me to be speaking here in this year's Open Source Summit. And my name is Tao Chen, and I work on Erenesis mainly for the RZMPUs, focusing on uh, bootloaders, driver development, and porting the artists, like free artists and zip artists. And I also focus on improving our uh, development efficiency. Uh, I am passionate on efficiency, especially some tools to increase our uh, development. And I contribute to open source, and I love coding, especially on hardware. So this is today's agenda. Okay, uh, let's take a moment to reflect on our daily workflow. So if you are a software developer, um, working with teams that rely on CSCD to maintain code quality, your workflow might look something like this. First, you start with uh, uh, local development. And once you've finished your changes, you need to verify them by uh, building it or running some static analyzing tools. And next, you push your code to remote and running a trigger the, uh, the pipeline for some error checks. And if you found some errors, you go back to the step one and to resolve these issues. Then, after you fix those errors, uh, you'll request someone to uh, review your code. And finally, your MR or PR are ready to be merged. So let's see what could improve, what we could improve for this workflow. I highlighted these three points that would cause inefficiency. So let's first uh, focus on this loop. Uh, this loop may take you a lot of time because of slow pipeline. So naturally, uh, you'll want to set up an environment to run the pipeline locally. But it can be challenging, especially when you try to share this environment with others. I will discuss this later, but if you have tried it before, you know what I mean. Then, pipeline is very slow, especially for a large team of developers working on projects with complex uh, remote checks. And last thing, the code review is time consuming and human errors are inevitable. So in this presentation, um, we will focus on three key methods to boost our uh, work efficiency. Docker, to easily maintain consistency between local and remote environment a developing environment, and Kubernetes to improve CI/CD pipeline performance, and we'll also explore a way to create a tool for AI code review. So, so let's let me do a quick research here. Uh, how many of you are, have been using Docker for your daily work? Please raise your hand. Wow, that surprised me. So this uh, section may, may bore you guys to raise your hand, but I noticed that some of you may, uh, didn't raise your hand. So uh, regardless of level of your experience, um, I believe you may learn something in this section. So please stick with me and let's get started. So to understand Docker, we first need to understand what containerization means. If you have no idea what it is, I think the quickest way to understand it is by comparing it to a familiar technology, virtualization. And I believe most of you may have experience of using virtual machines. So virtual machines are created and managed by a hypervisor, which is basically a software to simulate a virtual hardware environment for guest operating systems. And if you want to run an application inside a guest OS, it will be executed by that guest OS. On the other hand, containerization is that. First, here's a tool that will use Linux kernel features like a namespaces and C groups to create an isolated container-like execution environment. And each container can run independently 
And we will use these calls like on share to set up these isolated container spaces. So you can try yourself with this command line to see how easy it is to create container-like environment on Linux. And the application in each container will be executed directly by the host kernel. So the most popular implementation for the tool is Docker. And here's a history about the Docker, uh, about how it initially used LXC for container management, later involved by developing its own li lib container library, and today it introduced run C and container D to enhance uh, modability. Okay, here's some benefits about Docker. Uh, first, portability. Um, I think most of you may have no idea, uh, may have already known about this. Uh, container, it, it capulates an application with all its dependencies. So make, making it easy to move consistently and seamlessly. So here's an example. So if you create a doc, Docker image with the GCC and Docsgen within it, and it, it could be used on any platforms. And consistency. So for example, if you compiling a binary using a GCC within this Docker, it, it will have the exact same binary no matter the platform you're using. And the efficiency. Uh, because the application is ex executed directly by the host, host OS, it has a minimal overhead compared to a virtual machine. So why do we need it? Um, as an embedded develop developer, why do we need it? So as I demonstrated you about this workflow, about this loop, this loop will take you a lot of time. Because I, as I uh, explained, the pipeline is slow. And naturally, you want to build a local environment for faster feedback to speed up your development. But this is not easy. You need to understand first understand how the pipeline works by reading the CNCD script. And some tools may become outdated, and you need to, oh, th these tools cannot even be downloaded from the internet. So you have to compile it from the source code. And you may want to create a script to automate this environment creating for other uh, developers. But after creating that script, you will notice that it's really difficult to make it to work everywhere because everyone has its own environment to use. And that's why we need Docker or container. So we can, with Docker, we can pack all the tools and their required libraries for error checking into a Docker image and then distribute this image to other developers. And what other developers would do just to run a simple uh, command line to pull that image back to local and, they, and then they can do those error check-ins locally. And it ensures consistency and portability. And if you are a CSED script developer, you could focus on building a Docker image first. And that image will uh, include all the necessary environments to run the pipeline. And then this environment can not only be used by the remote, it could also be used by developers locally, uh, allowing them to run checks and receive faster feedback. And another important thing that Docker makes it possible to use Kubernetes or container, make it possible. So which lead us to the next section about the introduction about the uh, Kubernetes. So now we can uh, do those error check-ins locally to get a faster read, uh, feedback, but we still need to run the pipeline. And the pipeline is still slow, especially uh, when multiple developers trigger the pipeline simultaneously. So you may wait for a result for tens of minutes, even hours. So solution for this may, would be, first, we could, we could try to upgrade the server by purchasing a more powerful machine. Uh, it's simple and it's straightforward, but it's costly. And most importantly, uh, it has a physical limit to one machine could be upgraded. 
So the second solution would be you could try to design a system to combine multiple servers to form a powerful server. It's cost effective, uh, resource efficient, and flexible, but it can be complex and maintenance intensive. Setting up such a system is really challenging because we need to consider something like configuration consistency, failure handling, resource scaling, monitoring, and network configuring. So fortunately, we have Kubernetes. It could help us resolve these challenges. So let me quickly introduce about Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is an open source management tool. And with Kubernetes, we can access the servers as a single powerful server. And one thing I need to mention here is that Kubernetes is not a cloud server. Um, I understand that while many cloud providers will use it as part of their infrastructure to uh, manage cont containerized applications, but Kubernetes itself is simply an open source management tool. So anyone can use it to build their own cluster. So about the keyword cluster, I will explain it in this slide, some terminologies that Kubernetes will use. So node, a node is a server, a host. Cluster, a set of nodes. Pod, a group of one or more containers. And control plane, also called master node, so it manages the whole cluster. So some features about Kubernetes. Cost-efficient performance. So multiple servers are merged into a single powerful server rather than buying an expensive machine. And high availability. So servers are always available despite any number of failures. And the scalability. Developers can manually adjust the number of nodes easily, adding or removing them as needed. And the maintenance efficiency. And team collaboration. So Kubernetes enables multiple teams to share infrastructure resources efficiently while maintaining isolated workflows within a cluster. And if you are using GitLab for your remote, uh, it natively supports a Kubernetes cluster as its runner executor, so which further reduces the setup effort. And if you are using GitHub, uh, GitHub also provides a Kubernetes solution. All right, let me share with you some insights into configuring a Kubernetes cluster to maximize the node usage when scheduling pipeline jobs. So you might be wondering, why, why do we need to care about this? After all, you, you may expect Kubernetes will handle this uh, perfectly, right? So for example, uh, if we have a cluster with four nodes and run a pipeline with eight jobs, you expect that Kubernetes would evenly distribute those jobs, two jobs per node, right? Well, the reality might surprise you that in practice, you'll notice that some, some jobs often get scheduled on only one or only a few nodes. Why? while some nodes might not even run a single job. So let me show you what I mean. So here's a real world example. Uh, we have a four node cluster using the default scheduler and a pipeline is running with eight jobs in this cluster. So let's see how the jobs are distributed. So for this node, there are two jobs this node has zero jobs are scheduled. This, this node has three jobs, and this node has three jobs. So you can see it's quite unbalanced. So why does this happen? Because Kubernetes prioritizes high availability over optimal load balancing by default. So at least in the version of 1.30 that I was preparing this slide, even if you add some load balancing add-ons, the distribution might still not, might still not be what you uh, expect. Why? Because Kubernetes doesn't know how resource intensive a job will be before it starts. At the time of scheduling, all nodes 
uh, might appear relatively idle. And so it just assigns the jobs to the first node with enough resources without considering even distribution. So to fix it, we need to configure the cluster in a way that tells Kubernetes that our pipeline runner is special and that jobs need to be distributed evenly across, uh, across nodes. So we can achieve this by using some topology constraints with uh, anti-affinity rules, which are rules that regulate how paths are scheduled on nodes. And it's a little bit complicated, to be honest. Uh, so I think that's why Kubernetes will be recognized as a hard learning tool, because it has a really complicated rule to configure. Okay, let me show you the results after the configuration. So now here's the same cluster with the four nodes, but with optimized load balancing configuration. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, the same pipeline running eight jobs. So let's check the distribution this time. So this node has two jobs now, and this node has been distributed two jobs. This node two jobs, and this node two jobs. So it's perfectly balanced, just as we wanted. Okay, here's, here's a comparison of the results. When I run the pipeline three times with different runner setups, at the bottom, uh, it's a standard runner, which took about 21 minutes to complete. And in the middle, I used Kubernetes cluster with four nodes and the default scheduler to run the pipeline. It took only around eight and a half minutes, a significant uh, improvement. Finally, at the top, I optimized load balancing. This brought the time down to just six and a half minutes, so saving us even more time. Okay, let's do a quick recap. Uh, we've resolved the inefficiencies caused by creating and sharing a local development environment and we've improved pipeline performance by introducing the Kubernetes. So in the, in the final section, uh, we'll explore how to create a tool for AI review. So the goal is that uh, we want to build a tool for the AI code review. So we can separate this goal by several steps. First, determine language to write the tool. So I prefer to use Python. So any language will be fine. And in this tool, you'll do some API requests to comment on specific PR or MR. And you need to parse uh, the API responses to extract the diff data and identify lines for comments. So uh, you need to read the API documentations to figure out how you could do it correctly. And write an effective prompt for AI to generate review comments. And ensure consistent and reliable uh, AI outputs, and optionally, you could integrate this tool with a pre-commit uh, hook. So in this presentation, I will focus on the step four and step five to uh, discuss how we could uh, write an effective prompt. So the challenge is that it's difficult to achieve consistency and reliability in AI-generated comments. And AI might produce in the irrelevant or generic responses. So my approach to uh, resolve this challenge is that uh, you could try to give AI a template instead of making it generate outputs free, freely. And you could try to wrap the diff code with these uh, backticks to prevent the AI from confu confusing it with the prompt. And you can try to use a structured prompt to guide AI thinking. So the uh, generative AI generates responses word by word, meaning it doesn't fully know the answer until it uh, completes the sentence. So we can consider creating a prompt that makes the AI to think before it uh, gives you the answer. So that's how, I think that's how the, uh, the latest ChatGPT 01 uh, is doing, is it will think a little bit and give you the answer. And you can use a predefined keywords to filter 
the output. And you could try to implement a secondary AI prompt for self-review, but uh, this will increase the token usage significantly. So here's an example of a, a bad prompt. So if you want to review the code. So with my suggestion, the, this prompt could be uh, improved as this. So structured and guide AI to think. So review the code below in two paragraphs. In the first paragraph, th start with thinking and consider the following points, performance, reliability, readability, and maintainability. And in the second paragraph, write a very concise summary beginning with review. So the review is a keyword. In a tool, you can uh, filter this, you can detect if uh, AI output contains this keyword. If it contains this keyword, that means it has the, it may, it, it, there is a high possibility it has the output you want. Okay, conclusion. So, uh, in this presentation we learned how we could use Docker to improve our local development and we explored the, the basic about the Kubernetes and how it uh, enabled the cost-effective, powerful server setups to enhance pipeline performance. And finally, we discussed the key challenges in building an AI tool, focusing on prompt design and achieving stable results. Okay, thank you for your attention. So, any questions? Okay, thank you. So if you have any question, you can talk to me privately. Okay, thank you for attending this session. Thank you.